The Anarans are the oldest modern race. A deeply respected people, Anarans hold many of the most powerful positions in the galaxy. It was the Anarans who first mastered faster than light travel more than 1600 years ago. It was the Anarans who discovered the Eelherd and formed Syndicate Space, laying the groundwork for an interstellar civilization. It was the Anarans who discovered the whim, forever changing our understanding of the cosmos. At all turns in galactic history, the Anarans have been there. Welcome to Lanar Hasano, an original work of science fiction created by me, Blake Deweese. I began building this world back in 2016. Over the years, it's morphed and changed and grown exponentially. In today's video, we'll begin a series detailing the anatomy of the alien species in this universe, chronicling how the species have adapted and evolved to their environment. We're gonna get pretty in the weeds on this one, so be ready. If you like what you see here, consider subscribing to the channel to learn more. We can't talk about the Anarans' anatomy without first talking about the environment in which they developed. Morn Thais is a terrestrial planet about 15% larger than Earth. It orbits Tuif, a G-type main sequence star. The planet's composition includes a dense metallic core that gives Morn Thais a strong magnetic field. The planet has varied terrain, but is mostly dominated by dense jungles. The atmosphere on Morn Thais is 28% oxygen. This high concentration helps facilitate the dense vegetation of the planet. At a fundamental level, the Anarn's DNA structure is identical to humans. A double helix formed by base pairs, where adenine pairs with thymine and cytosine pairs with guanine. Environmental adaptations, though, have resulted in drastically different epigenetic modifications. Epigenetics refers to changes in gene expression that do not involve alterations to the underlying DNA sequence. In Anarans, this is the key to their remarkable adaptability. The diverse environment of their homeworld has necessitated a biological mechanism for rapid adaptations without the slow process of genetic mutations and natural selection. DNA methylation involves the addition of a methyl group to the DNA molecule, typically at the cytosine base in the CPG dinucleotide. This modification can change the activity of a DNA segment without changing the sequence. I told you, we're gonna get really in the weeds on this one. All that means is that while the baseline genetic code of the Anarans is identical to humans, their environment has demanded a drastically different form of life. The Anaran skeleton is a remarkable feat of adaptation. Typically, one would expect a planet with stronger gravity to result in a being that is shorter than a typical human. But the Anarans are tall. This is a direct result of their unique anatomy. Anaran bones are made of an advanced hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is a form of calcium phosphate that composes human bones. This is why you're told to drink your milk as a child. On a microscopic level, Hydroxyapatite forms a crystalline lattice structure. The arrangement of atoms within this lattice determines the material's physical properties, such as strength, flexibility, and density. Where Narn bones differ is the addition of silicone. Ingested primarily through their diet, the Anarn body converts silicone into biosilica and adds it to their bone matrix. The addition of this element helps strengthen Anarn bones, enabling them to grow tall despite their planet's stronger gravity. The skeleton itself consists of 211 bones, with extra vertebrae, enabling enhanced flexibility and support. They have extra ribs to provide thoracic protection, and they have additional bones in their hands and feet to facilitate agility across their diverse landscape. Their skeletal structure also supports the Anarn's muscle composition. The Anarn body contains around 750 muscles. Compared to humans, Anarns have additional muscle groups in their core, legs, back, and feet to help them navigate more in face. Anarn muscle fibers are made of proteins called tensilin and flexin. Tensilin makes up the core of the fiber. These are elongated, cylindrical cells that bundle together to form a muscle fiber. When activated by flexin, the tensilin cell rotates, contracting the muscle quickly and producing large amounts of force with more efficiency. As a result, Anarns can sprint faster, jump higher, and hit harder than many species. While their muscles are optimized for speed and strength, the Anarn's body consumes oxygen at an increased rate compared to humans. As such, they fatigue much faster and are prone to lactic acid buildup. While the increased concentration of oxygen in the Morinthine atmosphere helps mitigate this, it has certainly played a role in Anarn life off-world. Similarly, the Anarn body produces significant heat while under duress, 
making them prone to illnesses like heat stroke and hyperthermia. Still, their durable frame, coupled with powerful muscle fibers, has resulted in a species that excels in survival and combat. Inaran's skin serves the same primary functions as all other species. Protection from foreign material, insulation and temperature regulation, and sensory awareness. Inaran's skin is quite thick, being made of six individual layers, each addressing different environmental challenges. Because Morinthase has such a high concentration of oxygen in its atmosphere, and the planet is rich in dense foliage, fires can be especially deadly here. The outermost layer of Anaran skin is made of a high concentration of silica. This provides additional protection against fire, while being flexible enough to move. Other layers include a carbon biofiber mesh that enhances durability, a hydrating gel layer that helps regulate body temperature, and a regenerative layer. Their skin is harder to the touch than humans, but still smooth. Like humans, Anaran skin is pigmented to help shield them from the ultraviolet rays emitted from their star. Skin pigmentations on Morinthase vary wildly, with deep blues, purples, silvers, and metallic colors, oranges, reds, browns, and blacks. Also like humans, Anaran skin is essential for communication. Rather than releasing pheromones, however, the high oxygen atmosphere of Morinthase resulted in Anarans developing specialized enzymes in their skin that allow for bioluminescent communication, helping convey status on a basic level. Anarans have control over this to a certain extent, but it's much more subconscious, being heavily affected by their hormones. While subtle, this still makes it difficult for an Anaran to conceal their emotions when they feel them intensely. As such, they tend to be very open and honest about how they're feeling. Their most distinctive physical feature is their eyes. Anarans possess two eyes at the front of their head. The sclera is black to help reduce glare and increase the contrast of incoming light waves. Their iris, though, is constantly changing. The Anaran eye consists of chromophores, molecules that absorb certain wavelengths of light, causing us to perceive color. These chromophores are constantly changing due to several factors, like environmental stimuli, circadian rhythm, and even hormonal factors. Over the course of a single day, the Anaran iris will change colors several times. Across their lifetime, Anarans will witness a much wider range of colors than humans, but not all at once. The spectrum of visible light changes as Anarans age. In their youth, the Anaran eye has a high concentration of chromophores. Over time, as metabolism slow down and hormones change, the amount of molecules in the eye changes as well. Young Anarans will typically have eyes that dance between blues, greens, and teals. As they age, this will change to be deeper shades of reds and purples. We'll save a social examination of the Anarans for a later video, but it shouldn't be a surprise that they feel a deep divide across generations, as younger and older Anarans see the world in literally different ways. The Anarans reproduce sexually. However, a key difference is they have three genetic sexes. Mechanically, the Anarans produce three types of gametes. For simplicity's sake, we'll call them type A, B, and C. During conception, the type A and B gametes come together to form the initial zygote. A secondary fusion stage occurs as the type C gamete then infuses with the zygote, beginning embryonic development. The gestation period for Anarans is much longer, given the added complexity of incorporating three different gametes. While time is relative and months don't exist on Morinthase in the same sense they do on Earth, for simplicity's sake, we can say an Anaran will carry a child for 18 months before they give birth. This prolonged gestation results in a more developed child. Anaran infants fall into the semi-precocial category, possessing basic mobility from birth. While systematically similar to humans, this tripaternal system of gestation fundamentally alters Anaran society. Their concept of a relationship typically includes three individuals. In later videos, we'll talk about how the disparate species of the galaxy have integrated with each other over time. Once born, an Anaran will go on to live an extensive life. Their typical lifespan is between 200 and 300 years. The higher concentration of oxygen in the Morinthine atmosphere created a larger number of reactive oxygen species. ROSs are not good for life. A buildup of them can damage DNA and contribute to disease. As a direct result, Anaran DNA evolved to include advanced antioxidative defenses and strong cellular repair modules. Combined with advances in their technology, the Anarans are among the longest living individuals in the galaxy. The Anarans are remarkable people that have contributed to interstellar society in numerous ways. 
In later videos, we'll examine Inaran cultures and traditions and how they've changed over time. There's a lot more to talk about, and we haven't even gotten to the other species yet. So subscribe to Lanar Hasano to learn more. Also be sure to check out our other communities linked in the description. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.